Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is our own pianist in residence, Sam Page. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And Sam, I wanted to tell you, I, I've been spending more and more time practicing on my keyboard, and I knew you would appreciate and approve of that. So I wanted to let you know I, I am working on it. I'm getting better. I'm getting sure. to that. I'm getting to the point now where I could actually play something for somebody and not be embarrassed. <laughs> so. Oh, that's a good, yeah. You're in a good place. Yeah, place. right. I'm glad to hear that. That's wonderful. And yes, I appreciate you sharing. How, how's uh, how's the album coming? Because you, you released your album about uh, what was it, beginning of October, I think it was, somewhere around there? Uh, September. So it's been just so over September? two months, actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's it's good. I feel good about it. I've, I've, I've only heard good feedback, so that's not bad. I'm not sure how yeah. far-reaching it's been. I'm not even sure how to check that, but I'm... I can't say I'm not concerned about it, but I'm more like just like trusting it'll reach who it needs to reach. And I'm grateful to have music out there. I totally understand that completely. Um, you might you might want to um, check out, oh, of course, now his name is going to just leave my mind entirely. Gentleman who's I, been on the program numerous times. He wrote the, the book, The Last Law of Attraction book you'll ever need to read. And I can't remember what his name is. Andrew, oh. Andrew Cat. Um, but you might want to talk to Andrew about that. Because remember, he... I think he just recently reached his 100,000th book sold. Ooh. And, and he talks about how he got there. Okay. And how he got there was basically one day at a time, one email at a time, one YouTube video at a time, just you know, continuously just showing up to do the promotion every single day. And lo and behold, over time, he sold 100,000 copies of the book. I mean, damn, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. <laughs> that's amazing, yeah. Definitely. You know, so, so you don't have to worry about the, what the reach is, what you need to have to focus on is what can I do to just keep putting stuff out there? For sure. For sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the intention. I'll have to, I'll definitely check him out. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, if you want to reach out to Andrew directly, I mean, well, he's been on the show and I'll be happy to hook you up to him, but oh, uh, yeah. And, and he'll, he'll love talking to you. He really will. Oh, wonderful. Thank yeah. you. So take advantage of that. For sure. Speaking of taking advantage, we're, we're taking advantage of having a guest joining us today who's all about what we do. I mean, how great is that, right, Sam? I mean, you, you get somebody on who, who's like psyched to be on the yeah. show. He can't wait <laughs> to be talking to us. How is like that? that? That's like as good as it gets, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, his name is Bradley Charbonneau. And, and Bradley, Bradley actually guy that got his start around the same time I started the podcast. Um, and we're going to yeah. hear that story in just a moment uh, to find out exactly what kind of journey he's been on. But first of all, Bradley, thank you for joining us from the Netherlands of all places. He's caught, he's connecting at 10 PM his time. How dedicated <laughs> is that? Thank you, Bradley. How are you doing tonight or today or whatever it is? I'm, yeah, no, it, it's the night. It's definitely night. I'm great. I'm great. It's great to see you guys. It's, it's really great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's lovely to have you. So uh, you got to tell us the story of what happened 10 years ago. You were starting to tell us offline, but you got to tell the listening audience as well. Well, it's it's just you talking just now about uh, the Andrew with his book and how it's just a little bit at a time mm -hmm. and every single day. That's the name of my that's the title of my most popular book. It's called Every Single Day. Oh, no kidding. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, I just, I, yeah, it's really cool. I just had it translated into Spanish, just got it the other day. Ooh. And um, I, my Spanish is pretty basic, but I, I, I can understand todos los días, right? Every okay. of the day, sort of. But I was talking to the translator and I said, hey, so that sounds like it's just all the days, kind of literally translated, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, that sounds like the, t the title in English would be every day, mm -hmm. which, you know, okay. I, I say I brush my teeth every day. Yeah. I do that every day. But then if I, if it's something more powerful or more important or then, then I might say, then I'm going to add that modifier and I'm going to say, Oh, 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 but like meditation. Oh, I do that every single day. Mm, yes. Uh -huh. So for me, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so for me, that was a really important distinction. And so he took it back and he said, he changed it to aslo, aslo todos los días, which means something like 
I do it or I do or I make or something every single day. Okay. And I thought, okay, I guess that's the, whatever. He's the Spanish translator. But I thought, okay, thank you because I need that emphasis mm. to, to really, like you say, the qualifier, not just every day, some boring thing you do every day, but some important thing you do every day. Yeah. There's a big difference so, too. Yeah. 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 And so, and so that's actually, that sums up quite well kind of my shtick, my thing, the, the every single day, the, the emphasis on the, the doing. Like I have a chapter in there called the practice is perfect. So not practice makes perfect because I kind of don't barely believe in perfect, <laughs> right? But I, that is the perfect. goal is the practice. Absolutely. And so, and just like the guy you were just mentioning, if you just keep on delivering and keep on offering the value and, and if your goal is that sort of daily delivery or how, however often, but your daily delivery, then at some point, you know, just like if you write a chapter a day, someday you're going to have a book. If you take a step a day, someday you're going to run a marathon. Mm -hmm. But yep. if the goal then is the practice, then that is a much longer term sustainable action. And plus Andrew takes and it then, another step too, because, and I suspect you probably do the same thing, but he says it isn't also, it isn't just about taking those steps every day, but it's about taking steps with human beings. He's very big on relating to his potential readers, his actual readers, people who might be interested in what he has to say as individual human beings, not just as ciphers in, in, in a text message. He, he really heavily yeah. emphasizes that. Well, that is, he's in the advanced class, clearly. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's when it really gets good, right? Because for me, early on, it was just about me creating, me just mm. getting over myself, getting over my perfections and, well, I, I should say lack of perfections and uh, my procrastination and just creating, but creating for my own stake and sanity and enjoyment and, well, and getting over like pain and suffering and torture <laughs> <That's> uh, <cool. laughs> but, because then you get to the good stuff and that's when it's oh oh now we're working together with with other people like whoa you know now it's now it's really good yeah 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 so so, so i'll take this back 10 yeah. years ago because from what you're saying i'm, I'm getting the the flavor that you yeah. like so many of us you 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 had not evolved to the, the point that you're talking about now and and you were learning this no. stuff Tell, where, where were you at then 10, ten years ago so it, uh it's november 2022 right now mm -hmm. and no before november 2012 i so a good friend of mine john Muldoon. He, well, he, here's how much I was whole, keeping this a secret. I like to call it, I was in like the writer's closet. <laughs> and I, I like to talk about it. I like to dream about it. I like to pretend. I like to wish and hope and wish upon a star that someday I would be a writer. Mm. But the thing is, I wasn't actually writing. Like forget days in a row, like ever. I just wasn't writing, period. But, but I was sure good at talking about it. <laughs> and, and about this imaginary day in the future when it would all magically somehow happen. And so I was planning and, and, and projecting and hoping and all of this stuff that does not require actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really good at that. But on the inside, I was, I was dying from torture because I wasn't taking the action and I knew mm -hmm. I was playing it safe because you can only fail if you take action, right? If I don't actually write anything or I don't do anything, then I, I can't fail, right? Yeah, if true. you don't play the game, you can't lose. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, sure I was safe. I wasn't losing, but I also wasn't winning and I wasn't even playing the game. It reminds me of so, uh, the story that Mike Dooley, who was one of the presenters in the secret talks about, he says, you can, get into your car and you can have your copy of the secret in the passenger seat and your vision boards are in the back seat and you've just done your meditation and you've done all your affirmations for the day. And you, you, you basically have done everything you need to do, but you're still not going to get from New York to California unless you put the car in gear. 
Yeah. Good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's exactly it. I was, so I, I was sitting in the driveway for years. Yeah. And uh, so finally, and this is, I think, an important point, as, as like, strong and, and determined as I currently am and, and think I like to think I am, um, back then, I, I clearly wasn't doing it on my own. And so I needed this third party intervention. I needed somebody else, not me, to invite me, slash, like force me. <laughs> but <laughs> invite is the nice way. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, and, and he was a good enough friend to know he had to be a bit forceful about it. Hmm. But he, he knew I wanted this thing and he knew I was scared of it and he knew I, I probably wouldn't do it alone. And so he then, he created, he, he was running a program called Monthly Experiments, where he, where you do something for 30 days, right? You're like, uh, no coffee or wake up at 5 a.m. or whatever. And he knew from his experiments, and he, he called them experiments on purpose, because he said an experiment, there's no failure. There's just Great uh, point. outcomes. Yeah. And, oh, the outcome is I, or whatever, I learned this, or I did that, or, oh, oh, gee, this happened. And so... That was also reassuring for me because then I thought, oh, well, I can't fail. It's just an experiment. So yeah. let's just see what happens. And so he created one just for me and it was customized for my whole plan. And it was and it's super simple. It was just write every day for 30 days. Mm. And that was it. No, no rules, no quality, no quantity. It didn't matter if I wrote on a napkin and threw it in the garbage. <laughs> that was up to me. Super simple. And I think about this today because I think like, wow, how did I keep going? He, you know, he wasn't cracking the whip. He wasn't, I can't remember how much he was really checking in on me. He definitely wasn't holding my hand and leading me and giving me guidance and stuff. It was just mm -hmm. like, go for it. I'll see you in a bit. I might check in once in a while. That was it. <laughs> so, but I think because I was so ripe for this invitation mm -hmm. that it was just the perfect time and place. You, you were ready. And this you is kind ready. of... Yes. Yes. I was ready, which is kind of why I like, I like to tell this story because I, I, I would love to be the invitation for others hmm. to have them get out of their torturous, you know, perfectionism, procrastination roles, which so many of us are so excellent at and, and take action. And if they're waiting for that invitation, then I will happily invite. So, uh, as you may be able to imagine, it was tough in the beginning. I was mm -hmm. struggling. I wasn't happy. And because again, I, I, there's potential for failure. So I was scared. And I thought, which is interesting. Oh, if I get started. It's really interesting because yeah. like you said, it was an experiment. So there really was no way to fail. And yet you still have the fear of failure. And I yeah. get that. I totally get that. Yeah. It's so ingrained yeah. in the humans. It is. Yes. It's, yeah, it's really hard. It's, it's unfortunate that it is such a thing. But we really, we all struggle with that, I think, or at least I do. A lot of people do. Let's, so, let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So I got through the 30 days. And of course, I mean, no big surprise to him. But I say something like, well, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> <laughs> what was all the fuss about? <laughs> and so, um, but like fanatic and like ripe guy that I was at the time, I kept going. And so I was kind of like, well, 30 days. Well, wow, I, I, I could, I, I'm on a roll, right? I, I mean, yeah. shit. it's like, I, I often use the metaphors of, of running mm -hmm. and I had been running whatever, 5k every day, let's call it. Mm -hmm. Well, after, after 30 days, I'm like, well, I, I feel great. I'm in shape. This is easy. Every day is easier than the last. I'm getting better at it. It's, and it's almost becoming fun. What a concept. Yeah. And so let's, let's keep going. And, and sure enough, I kept going and uh, that was 30 days and I hit a hundred days and I was super excited. And then I just kept going. I hit 200 days. I hit 365 days, right? A Full year. Through. Every single and day then, for a year. Wow. Every single day without missing a day. And in fact, Nutcase extremist writer that I became, not only was I writing and I wasn't scribbling on a napkin, I was writing in, at that time I was writing in WordPress mm -hmm. and I hit publish every day. Mm. So 
scaredy cat guy here, I was putting this out into the public. I, mean, I wasn't exactly promoting it or advertising or anything, but still the fact that I'm putting my writing out there into the world was a monstrous step for me. Yeah. It, it would have been already a big improvement had I just been scribbling in a notebook. That would have been sure. Oh, too. absolutely. Yeah. But I was hit and published every day. So then I, then I 365 and then it was uh, almost. And I got to ask you something before you leave 365 because yeah. um, 365 yeah. for me is a bit of a magic number. Um, and the reason ah. I say that is there have been a number of times where I've mentioned here on the show something that a good friend of mine, Sydney Chavez, who used to be a, a co-host on the show, talked about one time. She said, it doesn't matter what it is you're trying to do. If, 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 let's say you, you're the worst person at drawing in the world. If you draw every single day for 365 days, you're going to get good at drawing. So the question I have for you is you wrote for 365 wow. days. Did you get better at writing? Absolutely. And I, I think you're right. I, I bet. I, there's probably some studies, maybe, maybe she knows. <laughs> I, I bet you cannot get worse, right? <laughs> you can't get worse. Well, if you really work out, you probably could, but it would be really rare. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be a funny test. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. I'll see if I, I get, get worse. really bad at writing. <laughs> yeah. Take out all the punctuation first. Now what? Okay. <laughs> okay. On that note, we will come back to it, but okay. I'm going to try to remember to talk about my program called Worst Book Ever. We'll, oh, okay. we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> I was curious about yeah. that. <laughs> so 365, um, and you're right. I, I At that point, I'm getting better. Everything's easier. I mean, and if I thought I was in shape after 30 and at 365, I'm like a marathon runner by now. Mm, yeah. And I'm just, I'm just going for it. I'm just doing it. And I'm, I'm feeling like lighter in my head. I'm, I'm feeling more like cl more clarity, more courage, more confidence. I'm just going, I'm on top of the world. And I'm like, well, why should I stop? If this is going so well, why stop? And remember, I have like no goals. And the, the beauty of this was I had no outcome expectations. Yeah, that's very good. That's, that's, very good. that's key. Yeah. And looking back, I think, wow, how did I keep going with no outcome or expectations? Because a lot of people want to know, like, you know, you do the diet for a month or you do the running for a month. Well, OK, well, did I lose five pounds yet or did I whatever increase my time by four minutes yet or whatever? That that's outcome expectation. Mm -hmm. And I did. I didn't have that. I, I, I don't know. I, I look back and I think, wow, that was kind of amazing well, I I, slash crazy. I think I know what it was. You loved it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, okay. if you, if you enjoy right. that, that's, that's what kept me going doing the podcast for years. Yeah. Now, in the early years, yeah. I, I had very few listeners, but I didn't care because I was yeah. loving doing the podcast that, which by the way, was a surprise. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't start out doing the podcast thinking I was going to love it. That, that kind of snuck its way in through the back door, but that's what kept me going for wow. years. You know, I think it's, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because I think I dreamt of being a writer before I really knew what it was like to be a writer. Mm. And I think writing those thousand days in a row acts just like you. And then I fell in love with it, you know, made me a writer, made you a podcaster. It, it helped you fall in love with it by doing it. Yeah. Well, you gave yourself a chance. That's, that's really that, interesting. That's, that's what I did. I gave myself a chance by just doing the podcast. When I did you know, my first couple hundred episodes and realized that I loved it, the only w way that I realized it was because I gave myself a chance by doing a couple hundred episodes. If I, well, actually, wow. well, all I really needed was about 25. After the first 25, I had to take a break because at that point I was exhausted. But nevertheless, I couldn't, I couldn't leave it alone. I had to go back to it because it just felt so good. See, wow, that's, that's so cool that you're saying that because that's what I wish upon others mm. and, and i i wish upon them to not spend the literal years in self-torture and sadness and frustration of of not taking the action because of all the fears totally. because of the the per, per, perfectionism and the procrastination and the imposter syndrome take your pick of of everything we're, we're so fearful of well, we basically talk no, ourselves just, out of stuff because we, we convince ourselves that there are all these different reasons why it won't work. Yeah. And, and yeah. You, you, hear, you hear yourself saying enough of those, you're going to believe it. <laughs> and yeah. That's just what happens. You start to believe it. Yeah. Um, what, what I have learned 
through doing the podcast and through talking to wonderful guests and so on and so forth, is that the best thing that any of us can do is to just dive in and do something for a bit. It doesn't even have to be a full 30 days. Just just give it a shot, yeah. and, and, and then you'll find out whether you like it. I mean, I, yes. I, was, on a sh- yes. I was on a show with um, uh, Alex Scandy, who does the Thursday show with me. She and I appeared on somebody else's podcast after they came out of this one. And that person asked, you know, how, how do you get, what, what would you give as advice to somebody who wants to start a podcast? And my advice was really simple. I said, don't look for technology. Don't try to figure out who's got the best platform or anything like that. Yeah. Get out your phone. Get out the recording software that's built into your phone and do an episode and see if you like it. Just yeah. try it. Yeah. Because you're going to find out real yeah. fast whether you like it. It's right. not going to, this yeah. isn't something that requires years of determination. You, you, you know, just from experiencing it. So the best thing any of us can do is instead of freaking out and worrying about, well, whether or not this is going to work and all that kind of stuff, you just try it. You find whether you like it. And if you don't like it, then you try the next thing. And you keep trying yeah. things until you find something that says, oh, I like that. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, also, like, if you went and bought the technology first and then found out that you didn't like it, then you've just wasted money on That's technology. right. Yeah. <laughs> There's that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to get right. first. You know, learning what we don't want or what we don't like is – Potentially even more important, which is something you got to check off your list that I think back with me, I was so set on this idea of me as this author Mm. that I was even scared of what if I don't actually like it? Yeah, sure. The writing part. Yeah. That freaked me out as well. Well, especially when you hear things like writer's block. You don't even know what writer's block is, but it sounds terrifying. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, just the word sounds it terrifying. Does. It sounds like shin splints or something right. painful. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and kind of equivalent, too, because I actually remember the first time I heard the word shin splint, and I said, I don't know what that is, but it sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me either. I still don't really know what it is, but it sounds painful. <laughs> is that fine? <laughs> but I think I don't want to know. It, it actually is very painful. It's, it, it's where the, uh, the, the tendons start to separate from the bone. And oh, the God. Like, oh, oh. It's really nasty. Oh. <laughs> it, I mean, it's not a total separation, but you, you, know, you get like a little bruising in there, and that just you know makes it impossible to, to run, to walk, to do all kinds of stuff. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I just ruined your day. Right, I, 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 I didn't I realize that. the finish line here. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> So, uh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump up in big numbers here because I, I, where was I? 365? And then, so I, I'm gonna jump up in numbers and it's, and this is gonna, I, 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 it's funny, I even hesitate to say these big numbers because they might freak people out. And I wanna stay with low numbers like, like one. <laughs> Just like you said, to do one episode. One episode. And try that and see how it goes. You want, you want to go crazy? Do 10. Yeah. Do 10. Right. So keep at the low numbers because if I had told myself that back then, November 1st, 2012, that I was going to write for not, not 365, not, not even a thousand, not even 2000, but 2808 days in a row, <laughs> I would have said, no way am I even starting down this path. Right. That's Crazy time. Exactly. That is for, I don't know, fanatical, wacko people, like apparently I am. So, <laughs> in a good so, way. <laughs> yeah, in a good, yes, absolutely. So I say it because that's what I did. But I hesitate to say it because I don't want to scare people in thinking mm-hmm. that you have to go for hundreds or especially not thousands of days to get some results. But I, I've often Walt, you said it earlier. If if I had tried to plan out doing eighteen hundred episodes of the podcast, I would have freaked out. Yeah, yeah. That, that just that that yeah. was so far beyond anything I could possibly imagine. But what does work is yeah. doing one more. I can do one more. That's easy. <laughs> there you go. That's great. That's great. One more. If I, I can just it. do one more, that's good. You know, I I enjoyed yeah. yesterday's. I'll I'll do tomorrow's. Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you're right. That's it. What, one more. In fact, so I, in, in the undergrad, I was a, a mathematics major. And then, uh, well, the fact that I live in Europe now, I dumped mathematics because I thought, what am I ever going to do with that? That's not like it is. <laughs> and I, <laughs> brilliant student that I apparently was not. Mm. And I, I switched to French because mm. that would get me to Europe. Okay. Mm. So, however, I still do appreciate math and I like math actually. And, but, but then I really like these simple numbers. Like you just said one and you said one episode. Cause I, I think there's really only two numbers, right? There's real, there's zero and there's one. That's true. And, and z- zero is you, there's no action. You haven't written a word or done a single podcast, right? And, and talking about the podcast, you might do someday still, it doesn't count as one. That's still no, that's zero. A, that's a zero. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and in simple math, if you multiply anything by zero, it's still zero. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so <laughs> it's troublesome as that works out to be. Annoying, <laughs> annoying as can possibly be, but it is true. <laughs> it's still, yeah. So I did all these, I, t- that was like seven plus years that I, I wrote every day in a row. And I finally, I didn't plan on this, but I, I stopped the day my mother passed away. Really? Wow. And it was just, yeah, I, I didn't plan it that way or anything. It's just yeah. sort of like, you know, I've, I, I, I've done enough. I'm, I'm in shape. I'm in writing shape. Mm-hmm. And it, it now, now, wow, are we two years later? I've now, I mean, I've written th- now 33 books. Wow. And 33. But, uh, <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> but, but if you think about it, it's, it's, if you think of the numbers again, 2,808 days in a row. Even if I wrote like 10 words, right? (laughs) That's a ton of books. It is. So it's really just, we're back to zero and one. And just like you said, like, oh, I can do one more. It's, it's as simple as that. And, and that's, I keep saying this in such like a a simple way because I'm really just talking to the myself of 10 years ago. Mm, Yes. That I, I wish had some guidance like this with such clarity. And simplicity to talk about stuff like a 30 day challenge and now, how life altering it could be. I, I was just realizing that, um, when I was reacting, saying, wow, 33 books that could actually get misinterpreted as, wow, my goodness, how do you do 33 books? When in fact, what I was actually thinking was, boy, he must love writing to do 33 books. <laughs> so it wasn't at all that other possible thought pattern. And, and as I think back, well, yeah, that could be interpreted that way, but I was thinking, Wow, what an expression of joy that is. You just love this stuff. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. wow, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah very cool. I love also that you're really zeroing in on helping people who feel stuck because I know that you know what that feels like. I know what that feels yeah. like. Oh, and yeah. it, it, it's one thing to know what it is. It's another thing to break free from it. You had, in your case, you had somebody who kind of gave you a little bit of a push, which was great. Yeah. In in my case, the push came from my circumstances. My circumstances were dire. So that became my push. But somewhere along the line, something, something has to, has to happen or has to click or there, there, there has to be a tipping point. If you use that common phrase, there has to be some tipping point that kind of pushes you over the edge and say, all right, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I I have a, a another chapter. Of course, I've written so many books. Like everything I say is <laughs> a chapter of one of my books. <laughs> it's kind of cliche, but I have a chapter. It's called "The Conundrum of Comfortable." Ooh, and I I think I just wanted to use the word conundrum, but <laughs> that's a good the, word. <laughs> the, <laughs> but the conundrum of comfortable of comfortable, right? Like the challenge, the problem mm. with comfortable, and that's. So like you said, you said you're in dire straits and I had a friend pushing me. And so I think that the hard part or a hard part can be if you're comfortable in what you're doing. And so there's not enough pain or suffering or circumstance or friends who are going to push you Mm. and you just keep going same old, same old, and you can waddle along in your secret misery again speaking from experience here yeah. and and not let anybody on to how you're secretly 
depressed and frustrated and completely unhappy and wondering when this magical day in the future is actually going to happen when you're supposed to start living that life that you you know you deserve to live mm. and yet when's that day on the calendar like I, I, I couldn't find it I, I like look forward to the calendar like, what day is that going to be <laughs> and the answer is yeah. never of course the answer of is course. never it's never going to happen or to put, the, to put another action. way, the, the answer is when, what day are you going to take action? That's the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that day is not day 2,808. Mm. It's day one. There you go. And just like you're saying with, I just need one more episode. That, that's all you need. You just need that one. That's it. And I think that's why the uh, simple numbers, the love of it is so important. Because right. when when you feel the love yeah. for it, it's not all that hard to do one. What's hard to do one is when it's like going to the dentist, <laughs> right? I mean that yeah. that's what yeah. that's what when, when when oh my god I gotta do one more oh please I can't stand it. you're not gonna even get one done that way. But if you're liking it, yeah. if you're enjoying the activity, then it's not so difficult. It's actually fairly easy. I mean it, yeah. it's kind of like you know. It's kind of like questioning, you know, Sam, how could you possibly sit down and start playing piano? Well, he loves it so much. How could he not do it? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Because, well, yeah, when you're saying, like, if how important it is if you love it, I'm like, oh, yeah, it doesn't feel like work if you love what you're doing. Right. And then you mentioned the dentist. I'm like, okay, yeah, perfect example of not that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and if, you, if yeah. you've ever heard, uh, rather, you, you probably haven't heard Sam play. When, when Sam sits down to a piano, he, he doesn't have music. He doesn't have a pre-planned song or anything like that. The, the music comes out of his fingers. He just starts playing. Oh, He's one of those people who yeah. just improvise instantly on the spot. He did an entire album improvised. I mean, that's the kind of pianist that he is. <sighs> and you know as well as I do that that only happens when you love it. It can't possibly happen yeah. if you if, if if it's the hardest thing in the world for you to do is to sit down at a piano. But if you love it, yeah. and, and you can just tell from the way Sam plays that he loves it, I mean, he just like lives for this stuff, then it's just going to flow, right? Sam, isn't that what happens? That's exactly yeah. what it does, yeah. I just sit down and kind of get, make sure my vibe's in a good place, and then kind of just sit down and start playing, and then kind of let it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't, wow. you, don't, you don't think about sheet music, you don't think about scales, you don't think about what key you're in, you just play. Right. Yeah. Because I spent enough years like learning about all of that and having like a solid foundation that at this point I can just work with it and it comes naturally enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because of all wow. the love that you put into it in the first place. Love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, love and, and probably some practice in there. Just um, a ton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a ton. Cause I think there's, there's like, there's talent. And there's skill, right? Like talent, you might be born with it or you just, I don't know, you're fortunate or whatever, or talent is more like in, born in you kind of, whereas skill, I think you can learn. And so mm -hmm. if you, cause I think anyone can learn piano, right? Any, anybody can, can, can improve their skill in piano. Mm -hmm. And yet, and, and that's, that's wonderful. Yay. Right. Anybody can, improve their skill of being a writer, being a podcast host, being a, anything you can, if you keep at it, keep at it. And even if remember, I'm not, I haven't even mentioned love or anything yet, it, then you keep at it, keep at it. You can get better for sure. But then if you have some talent by, by chance, then it sort of exponentially will increase the, the value and the, the proficiency of the, practice so even if you think you have no talent in a thing it might take you longer but you can still get there mm -hmm. and if you happen to find some talent along the way you're like ooh, ooh I, look, I got i got a little bit great then that can help with with speeding up the growth but it's because i think i'm a super slow learner and i think it, it took me did it really take me 2,808 days to become a fantastic writer? And now I can just take a blank page. And it sounds like you, Sam. I'm just like, blank page, here we go. I'm not afraid of it anymore. I'm like, let's go. What do you got? Let's see. Here we go. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm practiced. I'm exactly. in, I, I would say like in shape. 
Definitely. And, you know, do I have talent? I don't know. But I've, but I've practiced so much that I, I kind of like, I don't know, maybe there's some talent in there. But with tons of practice, then I think you can, you can reach the levels that maybe somebody more talented could get you more quickly. But everybody can still get there. Absolutely. And I think practice also can maybe help even bring out talent you didn't know you had, possibly. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. The thought. I just but thought. if you don't <laughs> practice, but if you don't practice, then how are you going to know? It's still theoretical. Exactly, exactly. Only one way to find out, I guess. <laughs> it raises an yeah. interesting question. What exactly is talent? Well, that's a good question now that you think, now that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, what is it? I mean, using the example we were just talking about, is it that Sam can play music really well? Well, did he get that from talent or did he get that from acquiring a skill? And, and does it matter? And is there a difference? And is there a difference? That's the thing, because I was thinking, like, are you born with it? And I'm like, well, I wasn't born knowing how to play. I had to start somewhere. But, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. That, that could be a whole conversation in itself. Yeah. I mean, historians talk about the pianist like uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, right? He he was playing, yeah. from, like, what was it, age five or four, something like that. He did his That's first like, uh, recital yeah. at six, you know, for, for a mass audience. I mean, he was way ahead of his time in so many different ways. He was He was writing... Yeah, how many symphonies? I don't know how many pieces he wrote. He was only he only lasted like thirty seven years or something like that. And he just produced this massive volume of work in that time. You know, so people say, well, there's an example of talent. But the question that's in my mind is, how much would he have put out if he didn't love it so much? Yeah. So so is talent tied to how much you love it? Yeah, it's like is there a connection between mm. love and talent for something? I think the love. I think there is. Yeah. Interesting. Which gives an entirely different flavor to what talent is all about. We we kind of tend put talent on a pedestal, right? Right. He's got, he's more yeah. talented than I am, and all that. But what if yeah, talent is simply yeah. just an expression of how much you love something? I like that now, idea. Now all of a sudden, that's in everybody's reach. Right. Right. Yeah. I love it. Hey. Wow. So I'm. I'm not kidding about the mathematics stuff, right? And I really think in sort of math terms. And I often think in sort of line graphs. I don't okay. know why. I, <laughs> I can't, I can't help it. And, <laughs> I, even if I wanted to, I probably couldn't stop it. But, that is <laughs> and so, what, speaking, speaking of which, my next book is called Frequency. Frequency. And, and there's two elements of it. And one is sort of like intervals. Should you do something daily? Like uh, you, you used to do your podcast weekly. Now you do it daily. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a different interval of time. Sure. And then there's another aspect of frequency. And that is like, if you know uh, an old, I'm going to call it old fashioned radio dial where you have to turn the dial. It's not digital, right? You, you have to kind of feel it. And you can kind of see the little thing on the, on the, you know, 87.5, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. You have to listen, right? You have to right. tune oh. in to that frequency, right? And then it's like, <laughs> it's like, <gasps> la, la, la. Oh, I got it. I got it. So now you're, you're tuned into that frequency. So there's, I see these two elements of this book, right? There's the intervals, the daily, weekly, monthly, that kind of stuff. And then there's this tuning in or vibration or resonance. And so, and this is related to me seeing things in waves. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so what you're saying about like, we got like Mozart and we got Sam and we have maybe the guy who's learning piano and really struggling. And so I see it like if it's, if it's wavelength and it's this frequency and, and I love Sam, you mentioned flow. It's like mm -hmm. you're in the flow state. The oh, yeah. flow state is I like, that I can see the two lines. There's the, there's the play, the piece you want to play and there's how you're feeling it. And you're just together. You're just in flow with the frequency and it's beautiful. We're talking about music here, even better, but <laughs> you're just in flow. You're in the same frequency or vibrating at the same frequency as the music. Ooh. So you're 
it's just you. You are one with the music. Ooh. It's it's easy, right? And so for you, it's effortless. It's just, oh, I'm not playing. I'm just feeling it. For sure. It's I never beautiful thing. vibrating at the same frequency either. I like yes. that. Great way to. Yeah. And so I wonder if so Mozart, so if you think about like increased frequency and like learning aptitude and, and how fast can someone learn something? Well, maybe Mozart, he just had this aptitude and maybe love. I, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know enough about the guy. Did he love music? But it was like, that's my passion and I just love it. I mean, I'm good at math. I'm not, I don't love it. I don't like, I'm not a mathematician. I don't, I'm not a professor at the university in math and I don't want to be either. I just kind of like math. But I wonder if Mozart, if, if you lo- I mean, like, look at this like perfect uh, stew here we're brewing. If you love it, you're passionate about it and you've got talent already and then you practice like i can just see it's like zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> but the, the frequency is going going really fast and oh, yeah. so that condenses the time that in, what were you saying he's like four years old and he's writing his first you know symphonies Where, whereas for regular mortals <laughs> that's what like decades or something i don't i don't even know but, but yeah i don't know yeah, but that's I, how I kind of see things. I see things very visually. I hear and you. So I, and that's where this this frequency book came about, because then I, what I want to try to match up is, for example, with you, Walt, with this podcast. I mean, that's like one of my questions in the book. It's like, how often should you do a thing, and why? So, in, in fact, I, 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 I'll just ask you: you used to be weekly, but now you're daily. How, how did that come about, and how has it changed things? It, it was very straightforward. It happened largely all along the lines you're talking about. I was doing it weekly and it just wasn't enough. It, it was really that simple. Uh, I, I call it your daily dose of happy. That's been the subtitle for about five or six years now. And yeah. the reason I call it that is because I was getting a daily dose of happy every time that I did it. The only problem yeah. was I wasn't getting a dose often enough. I needed more doses. And unlike opium or heroin or something, it's not, <laughs> it's not going to kill me to get more doses. Actually, they, they, they actually make me better. There you go. Be, well, if you're going to be addicted to something, why not be addicted to this? This is good stuff. You know? <laughs> I love it. You know, you just solved it right there. That's it, right? The daily dose. I mean, the daily dose of something positive, good for you, that you can create on your own. It gives, it provides you energy rather than taking it. Totally. There's benefits galore. You know that like list on the, like the list of the prescription drug, right? And the list of all the things that like can kill you and that are terrible and they're yeah, like yeah. super long. <laughs> but well, well, this also has a list of side effects, but they're all good. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Wow. Wow. That, that, wow. We're really just sailing on the same sailboat here. It's yeah, just really it's beautiful. Really cool. I'm loving right. to hear that. You also, I love the fact that you were bringing the mathematics in. Um, I'm not sure that all musicians think in terms of mathematics per se, but mathematics is definitely a part of music. Oh, for I mean, sure. It's, it's a huge part. You don't have to be a mathematician to do the, ma- the math part of music. But I mean, I mean, Sam, you, you, you're, you're pretty much an expert at this. You can talk to this. Oh, for sure. Like the first thing that comes to mind is just the rhythms and the complexity of like the yep. eight notes and dotted. Yeah. And the, the, that can be, that can get pretty complex. So I, I never, I often don't remember that, but that is definitely a mathematical aspect. When, when you just look at, you know, how music is written, it's <laughs> written in measures of usually like fours or eights or, or sixes mm-hmm. or threes, right. you know, it's, it, it, it's all mathematically, it, it, it's a mathematically precise thing. And of course, it doesn't, it doesn't get expressed that way. When you play, you don't play it with, well, I'm going to play this mathematically. But right. still, the math influences how you think about it as you're doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That's right. The fourths and eighths. And... Wow, it's more mathematical than I realized. Oh, it, it's incredible. Especially when you start getting into, you know, like uh, uh, the song Take Five. It's a 5-4 um, oh, yes. measure. You know? Yeah. And... and it has this very definite feel to it 
that, you know, anybody who's ever heard the song Take Five, oh yeah, I know what that is. But they don't think about it in terms of being a five beat measure, but that's what it is. It's a five beat measure. <laughs> oh yeah. That's wow. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. In fact, that's, that's wow. actually why I, I've loved getting back into playing keyboard. I, I hadn't played piano, Bradley, since I was a kid. I took six and a half years of piano lessons and I stopped. I played guitar yeah. as a teenager because piano wasn't cool at that point. Billy Joel hadn't gotten really famous yet. And then I never really got back to it until this past Christmas when my brother gave me an electronic keyboard and I started playing again. Wow. And started rediscovering all the things that I loved about the piano that my second piano teacher had basically drilled out of me so I didn't love it anymore. But I was finding it again. I was and, and like, oh, I love how the, the math works. I love how the chords work and what the math is behind the chords and how the structures all kind of fit. fit. I loved all that. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to say this out loud here. It's, it's going to scare me again. But hey, I, I, not too much <laughs> scares me. But um, I really music is one thing I miss in my life that uh, mm -hmm. me. I enjoy consuming it, mm -hmm. but I. I have not been a creator of music and I, I would like to, I'm going to state it here for myself right now. Have you ever tried anything like musically at, at all? Yes. Uh, way back when yeah, it sounds like some experiences you had, you know, as a kid and then I think in college, I might've taken a piano class, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, uh, and, and I should know, you know, the every single day guy and habits guy <laughs> over here, I should know, I should, if I played 10 minutes a day for a year, I'd, you know, I would be better than I am now. You know, it's but remember where it all science, starts, right? though. It starts with, do you like yeah. it? Well, it, I'm probably very similar to my thoughts about uh, 10 years ago. I think I will like it. Okay, that's a good start. Good start, definitely. Yeah. Well, mindset thing, yeah. Prince. I, I would like to like it, right? That's all right. I just, I just, this is also very typical. I just think I'm terrible at it. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I think a lot okay. of it. Okay. Um, well, there's also some good news there. Except for Wolfgang yeah. Amadeus Mozart, we're all terrible when we start. That, yeah. That's true. yeah. Sam was terrible when he started. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The basics, just like anyone else. And, and, and like you were saying, well, when we started off, it's, it's probably difficult to like, consciously try to get worse at something. <laughs> 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 I don't think I could be worse than I am now. <laughs> Speaking of which, this segues perfectly into something I wanted to, to tell you guys about. Okay. And that is, so, Mr. 33 book, 2,808 days in a row, blah, blah, blah. You know, these giant numbers that for somebody just getting started out, they're going to freak them out, right? It's just, whoa, that's crazy talk. I don't, I can't even listen to this anymore. It's, it's, you know, wow, I'm going to go nuts. And so, cause I'll, I get a lot of people coming up and they say, Oh, Bradley, I have a book idea. I mean, if I had a nickel for every, yeah, I have a book yeah, idea. Yeah. And I think, and, and part of me, if I'm like in a snarky mood, I'm like, yeah, great. Tell me about it when it's done. Right? <laughs> and so <laughs> I don't want to hear about the idea. Yeah. And that's, that's not my like normal, loving, caring, dearing, dearie self, right? <laughs> but, and I don't say that. It's just what I think. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about it when it's done. So <laughs> what I, what I offer in the, in the early on, I, I, I love teaching. I love helping. I love coaching. And so it's helping people with their books, right? With their ideas and except. So in the, in the writer's world, they call them, there's two types of writers kind of. There's a gardener and an architect Ooh. and the gardener just like has a handful of seeds, not quite sure what they are, throws them into the ground and sees what happens, right? No, sees okay. what blossoms. Whereas the architect has a blueprint and, you know, measurements and it's all, I know exactly the house I'm going to build because I have the blueprint right here. And whereas the gardener is like, what are you growing? I don't know. We'll see what, you know, comes up. <laughs> and so I am like a card carrying gardener, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> Total gardener. And that's wonderful for me. But it's, I can't teach gardenership, right? I can't say, oh, dear potentially not very creative person, go, just go sow seeds and water them and see what happens, right? That doesn't work out real well, In, unless they're a full-on card-carrying gardener also, 
Mm-hmm. But, but it's still, it's not a great teaching method. The people want the architect. They get, give me the blueprint. Bradley, tell me what I need to do. Give me like the steps. One, two, three. So that's been hard for me because I am truly a gardener. So, and, and so when, when we, I first started with, with coaching potential writers and I, I had some, I don't know how to write your book or something like that. And then I made a completely satire satirical course and it's called how to write your best book ever. And I love being like snarky and funny and jokey. And I think I'm so clever. And I made this course and it's, it's basically a joke and it's basically about how it's a non-existent perfection that this course is about. And so it's like, when does it start? Tomorrow. <laughs> you know, and, and when, when is it, when is it finished? Never. <laughs> and, and oh, what are the requirements? Oh, you need at least, you know, a few more PhDs in literature and you should probably get divorced three times for some drama in your life and all these ridiculous things. And, and basically it's a big joke about how you're, you're actually never going to do it. This perfect book, right? And so, you know, as you can imagine, it got some laughs, but, um, that was it. It was a good for, it was good for a few jokes, but people like Bradley, okay, how do I really write a book? Yeah, right. <laughs> and I said, I said, you know, I'm a gardener. I, I'm going to have a tough time teaching you. So, but what I can teach you is what I'm really good at. And that's kind of back to day zero and day one and kind of day zero through 30. It's the whole, it's the more, mindset shift, the more breakthrough stuff, the more getting over yourself and the perfectionism and procrastination and the, and the imposter syndrome, that kind of stuff. I'm excellent. I can help you get through that. And so instead of have a, a course called how to write your best book ever, I had another course called how to write your worst book ever. <laughs> and I'm you not like even kidding. Things, don't you? <laughs> I do. I do. And I'm not kidding. The goal is truly to write a bad book. And so I had a student and his, um, his, the book he really wanted to write. This is, this is my favorite element. It's called like opposite or something. His book, he's like a, a entrepreneurial consultant guy and his book is called simplify and he simplify your entrepreneurial whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. And so sort of a business book. And he's been working on it. And I get this like all the time. I've been working on it for two years. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm on my third editor. I'm just like, Oh, and so, all right. All right. I'm like, all right, here, ready to go. Ready for your, your new book title. You're going to be working on in the next 10 days. He's like, uh, I don't know. I say the title is complicate. <laughs> You're going to write a book called complicate. And, and, and he even, had, he immediately, I was on the phone with the guy and he immediately had a subtitle. It was something like, how do you know add complexity and stress into your life on a regular basis that you you know it was you terrible go. and so the guy i mean he was smiling ear to ear he's laughing he's talking about chapter titles we were even like we were we were creating his cover and there was going to be you know sometimes they have like a a little maze which is really simple he was going to have one. It was amazing. It was like impossibly complex. <laughs> with, and the mouse is like dead. The mouse is, because the mouse gave up trying to find the exit. And so it was, and he was just having a ball even talking about this book. Yeah. And I said, okay, you know, we've got eight more days, you know, get it done. And sure enough, it's a piece of cake because the pressure is off to write this greatest book ever. There's no, it, the goal is to be bad, right? It's, mm-hmm. You can't lose. We're back to the whole experiment thing. And so if he, if he accidentally makes it good, I'm like, Hey, 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 that was kind of a good chapter. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> screw up some grammar or something there. pal. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so the lightness and the joy and the happy. And of course, so after 10 days, this was just a 10 day little program, right? And after just a few days, they're already they're at more at ease. They're joking about it and they're, they're having a good time and they're, they just like, whoosh. Right. And then like my favorite part is to say, okay, here's your book. It's finished. Look, it's called, it's complicated. And so I want you to go to your dinner party and I want you to, you know, bring your book and say, Hey, look, and it has the person say, Hey, is that your book? Yeah. Oh, that's your, but you finished it. Yeah, I did. How is it? It's terrible. <laughs> it's awful. 
And there's like no way you can say that with a straight face, right? You're just gonna laugh and joke about, oh, I did this program worse, but never blah blah blah. And already you're getting over that all that fear and all that yeah. expectations of you, this you know wonderful, magnificent New York Times winning author of your best selling book. It's all <laughs> pressure, pressure, pressure. And you're mm. not going to write that book, at least not your first book. So let's get your worst book out of you finished. I'm big on finished. You got to finish it. And then at, by definition, because that's your worst book, every book after that book is going to be better. It's going to be better. Yeah, sure. And, and then, and guess what? Your second book is going to be so much easier to write. You're going to have fun with it. And it's probably going to be pretty good. I love that. That's like a great it. approach. So. That, that was, that was the, the program. I did get in trouble. People didn't, people couldn't. So I just explained the backstory to you. So you guys, you get it. But also I'm talking to these guys here who've done a gazillion podcasts and who like play piano out of their, you know, hands. <laughs> it just magically happens. Right. So I'm preaching to the choir here. But if, if you, if I go to some more, more person who's more skeptical, who's more concerned, is more self-conscious, might say, Oh, Bradley, I don't want to spend you know, time and money and invest my time and money in this worst thing I'm going to, you know, toss in the garbage. That's, oh, you know, dearest me, that sounds like a waste of my time. And I say, okay, you're not, you're not getting it. You're not getting the, the goal. The goal is the mindset shift, really. And the goal is the practice of playing, of enjoying, of, of flowing, of going to the piano and banging out whatever your fingers say. And there's no, composer over there who's going to critique you if i'm sitting in front of that person who's saying exactly what they said to you that oh no i'm not i can't waste my time you know on, on you know doing this nonsense thing that that's no good and nobody's going to want and so forth and and as i'm hearing you describe that i'm just hearing myself interrupting them and saying why not <laughs> justify to me yeah. why you won't do this i want to know what the reason is and I mean that sincerely, I'm saying to this person. I really want to know what the reason is. Yeah. Because the answer is going to be something along the lines of, well, it's a waste of time. And my response is going yeah. to be, how do you know? <laughs> how do you yeah. know it's going to be a waste of time? <laughs> Have you decided in advance that it's going to be a waste of time? <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Because if you decide right. that in advance, it doesn't matter what I teach you. You've already decided it's going yeah. to be a waste of time. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Mindset, how that plays into it. Yeah. 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 The only way you're going to change Mr. Vis's uh, potential writer is if you decide to think about it differently. If you insist on thinking about the way you've been thinking about it, nobody can help you. Right. Yeah. So on that note, so the work I, I have struggled with the idea of worst, right? I, I, it's, it's difficult to quote unquote sell it out there to the public because if I can give them a little backstory and tell them a little bit about it, they're like, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I'm in. That's great. Right. But just a pure cold call, so to speak. They're uh -huh. like, that's weird. You know, next, you know, swipe. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, uh, so now that it's also, so I've been doing this program for two years. I've done it through three times. I did it every six months and it's been a rip roaring good time. And we have, you know, loads of wonderful, hilarious testimonials. I have, you know, book covers from the students and yeah, finish this great. book and great stuff, right? But um, the, the worst thing was kind of killing me. And like, I have a coach and she's like, I, Bradley, I know you love the worst. I get the worst, but 98% of the people out there are not going to get your joke. And so because it's the 10th anniversary now of this 30 day challenge, which was, had, didn't have very many rules. And, and now I, I, I'm personally doing this a YouTube create challenge. I'm doing a video every day for 30 days. And again, I have no out outcome, no expectation, just totally having fun with it. And I'm already loving it. I'm a day, whatever, 15 here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm loving it. So thanks to the 10 year thing, I now have morphed and feedback from way too many of the way too many like coaches and mastermind groups I'm in. <laughs> um, it's, it's evolved into the core of what I believe, which is really create. And so it's become more create for 10 days or create for 30 days. Nice. 
And so, and here's where you guys come in. This could be really interesting. I, yes, I'm a writer guy, but hey, I'm doing YouTube now. I'm doing video. I love doing video. I also love, I narrate my own audiobooks. And so I like writing. I like audio. I like video. But I really want to make this 30 day. I, I, I might do a 10 day and then a 30 day. Cause some people say, Ooh, 30 days. Like, Ooh, that's a big commitment. And it is. So maybe a taster of 10 day thing. Right. But what I would love, my dream is to have the, a 30 day create challenge, but I want, I'd like you, dear student to be able to choose your flavor of creating. So maybe they're musical or wannabe. And so they'd like to create a song. And so I want them to create whatever, 10 or 30, 10, 10 creations or 30 creations. And so maybe it's 30 songs. And if even if 28 are terrible and one is like, okay, and one is, hey, that's kind of good. That's yeah. all you need. Or, or their audio and they want to, they would like to, here, Walt, think of this. They would like to uh, interview people uh, for a podcast. That's their dream. Mm-hmm. Oh, you haven't started it yet? Oh, no. Well, I'm waiting for the right equipment and, you know, I'm waiting for blah, blah, XYZ company and, a, you know, blah. We've heard all, all heard it all. Right. So part of my thought is I want to have this 30 days of creation. And yet I'd like to have, I, I sure, I'm writer guy. Great. But I don't know. I, as I just admitted, I don't know a thing about music. And I don't, I, sure, I have a podcast, but you've been doing it for four gazillion and a half episodes right <laughs> and so i would really love to have some expert guests to to talk with these students in their creation in how these different paths they might go down the different path because if they because a lot of people think writing is hard and i you know i used to think that i don't think it anymore but a lot of people think writing oh oh that's that's like serious and professional and grammar and all that difficult stuff. <laughs> but if it's, if it's music and if they feel the music, then they're okay with it. Or if it's speaking, like you mentioned writer's block. Well, is there a speaker's block? Yeah, there I've actually is, but yes. <laughs> there is? Okay, there we go. Yeah. The speaker, speaker's block is basically they get up on stage, they open their mouth and they can't think of what to say and then they freak out and okay. run off stage. Yeah. 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 So that's my current plan. I'm going to have, I just had a conversation today with one of my partners and she said, Bradley, I love the 30 day thing, but 30 days is big. Not to, also to create, by the way, for me to create like 30 prompts and 30 days and 30 days of content and all that stuff. I mean, I have no problem creating content, but again, I'm the gardener. I just like throw seeds. And so she, of course, she's much more architect. She's like, Bradley, Bradley, gardener, gardener. And so she wants to build the blueprint of the house, which I'm super thankful for and of the 30 days. But she's like, you know, I think we should start with a 10 day thing and get some feedback. People run through it. What do they like? What do they miss? What do they need? And so here's my shout out to you guys. I would love to have it be more about writing. I'm sorry, you know, not only about writing. I want it to be, hey, I'd like to do a podcast. Hey, I'd like to do it musical, musically. I don't, I don't even know how that would work, Sam. But I'm just thinking, I mean, this is me, gardener, right? I'm sowing seeds. I'm planting, throwing seeds at you guys. <laughs> you know? So, uh, throw, that's where I'm I am. Throw, that's throw I am. suggestion back. The suggestion yeah. I'm going to throw back is, um, especially for the ones who are trying to figure out the blueprint. You know, the, the ones who yeah. want the 30-day program, but think that it should be maybe a 10-day program. I'm going to recommend a yeah. one day program. Ooh. Ooh. You see what I mean? I do. I, you got one day. So there's your structure. You got one day to do something. Yeah. And then once your one day program is up, what do you do? You do the next day. There you go. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Where's my pen? <laughs> <laughs> Another book has been born, I can tell. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not that, anything but that. <laughs> so, I even have the title for you, The One Day Writer. <laughs> oh, wow. He's scribbling notes. There we go. <laughs> I am. It's a bad sign. Don't, don't give me more book ideas. <laughs> 
<laughs> but seriously, that that's all that somebody who wants the structure really wants. They don't need a big structure. They want a structure. They want more than just throwing the seeds on the ground. They, they want to have an edged garden. Yeah. So give them an edged one garden. Day, it, just, it, just, it just has to be only one day is all. Now you don't have to get complex. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And, and then if they graduate, they can go to a 10 day or a three day or whatever. Yeah. And or, you don't even or, tell or them. Or it's just one more day. Yeah. I mean, after they're done with the day, then you can offer the 10 day. Because now they're they're not freaked out about doing a one day anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I love this. This you just <laughs> like got to the core of the matter here. I like that. right because that's kind of the number we've been talking about the whole time. That's it's right. One, right? Yeah, that's how. Well, that's how we both got started, right? I got yeah, started by just yeah, doing yeah, one yeah. episode. Well, I recommend to other people, you, you're thinking about doing a podcast, do one episode into your phone. Don't even record, don't even save it anywhere. Just do the one. <laughs> you want to try piano? Go, just go sit in front of it. Don't even take piano lessons. Push yeah. a key. Push a key and see what happens. See what comes see out. See if you like that. Definitely. You don't have to make any decisions beyond just doing one thing today. That's the only decision you have to make. And when you make that decision to try it, you find out pretty darn quickly whether it resonates. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, Sam, the first time you sat down at the piano, how long did it take before you finally realized this is for me? You know, I, I can't say exactly, but it didn't take too long because I was quite young myself. Um, but I stuck with it and I wouldn't have done that if I didn't enjoy it. So it must have not have taken that long. <laughs> I remember my first piano lesson and the the teacher asked me afterward what I thought about it. My first teacher was wonderful, by the way. I had oh, two yeah. teachers. My first teacher was wonderful. And she asked me what I thought about it afterward. And the only thing I could think of to say was, can we do it again? Aw. <laughs> wow. She said, well, yeah, you come back next week. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think you mentioned the word earlier, qualifier. Mm. And that, cause this could, this could sort of qualify or filter to the next round, right? Just like you said, if you, yeah. if one day or you do the one key and you're like, okay, what's for dinner? Right. <laughs> it didn't do anything for you. Then, then that's good. You know, you learn yeah. something and you're done. Now you know. Maybe it's not your thing or. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong yeah, with that. That's it's fine. a perfectly legitimate result. Nothing, no, no. But it doesn't take long. That, that That's the thing that really amazes me about just trying things. It re you can actually try things in your mind. It takes a little little uh, advanced skill. You have to kind of try some physical things for a while first. But after you've tried a few physical things, it's actually pretty easy to try something out in your mind. And now you can whip through stuff. I mean, you aren't sure what your passion is. You can whip through stuff pretty quickly at that point. Right. I try this and I try this and I try. Ooh, that one's good. That's you've got me at the one day writer here, by the way. I'm, I can't get it, that it, out of my head. It, it, I'm it. telling you, I think, I, I think that's a bestseller right there. Rock gold. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. I think that is an absolutely brilliant program. The one day or, you know, or the one day blank, right? The one day. Podcaster, one day fill in the blank. Piano player, one Whatever day it is. Writer, yeah. Yeah. One day do singer. One episode. Do one write one chapter, one page, one whatever. W write one song. Or like you or you even said, just just one key. Just think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're really What's daring, you? try two keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Discover your first chord. <laughs> Woo wow. Okay. It clearly got me thinking again. Apparently Danger that zone. Is. Well, that, that means this has been another successful example of your daily dose of happy. So, Bradley, thank you for joining us on the program. You got to tell us, by the way, before you, you go, you got to tell us about your um, the 30-day program that you already have going because that's something that people need to know about. If, if somebody wants to check that out. 
how did they find that? Yeah, I can go to 30, like the number 30, 30.repossible.com. No. Okay. So not, not possible, not impossible, but repossible, like possible again and again. 30.repossible.com. All right. So I'll make sure I'll, I'll put that into the, uh, the show notes as a link so that people can find it there easily. But yeah. And right. what, what did they, what did they find when they get there? Well, as of, um, two minutes ago, it might <laughs> turn into a one day program. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I do believe in the 30 day thing, right? I love what you're saying about the one day, but I think that's, that's I see this progression of, you know, first try one, then try 10. Then, are you ready for 30? Come on in, right? Because mm-hmm. remember, I was like ripe and ready for that 30 day program, but yeah. it, it's a, it's a commitment 30 days. And I, and I want students, I want participants to be like in it, in it to, to win it. I don't <laughs> want them to say like, Oh yeah, maybe yeah, somebody like four told me to do this thing. And you know, I, don't, I don't really want that. So I want, I want you, to, I want you to want to be there. So, but maybe the, this one day writer and then, and then the 10-day challenge or something, and that'll lead you up to 30. But in any case, at the 30.repossible.com, we will we will have options. Okay. <laughs> As of very soon, we will have options for <laughs> Well, it, it's the right kind of, of, of web page because it, it's evolving. Very often yeah. people build something that's done, but it's, ne- it, it, it's never really done. Well, you're treating it like it's not done. That's going to be the best kind of program. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to have fun t- doing it too. I mean, here I am 10 years later doing a 10-day YouTube challenge. I'm having a ball. I'm like a kid. Oh, there it's you great go. fun. That, oh. Yeah. And so it can just keep happening. I mean, here, I'm going to challenge myself, Sam. And I want to do, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this here, you know, publicly. I do, I want to, I need my, I need music in my life. I need to create music. I thought of singing, could be singing as well, but. Oh, yeah. I, mean, uh, I, I really like my, my audiobook narration. I really enjoy that. Very good. More like, it's more theater. Right. Oh, but anyway, yeah. oh yeah, just um, performance. It's really cool to hear about you playing piano. That's just really inspiring. Oh, I appreciate that, and happy happy to inspire. Yeah, it seems yeah. very inspiring. Yeah. No doubt about that. Somebody else is inspiring right. too. Is Bradley Charbonneau? I got to tell you, Bradley. It's something that I I tell everybody who's on the show. There are many people who have heard you, or perhaps written some read something that you've written. Um, out of 33 books, I wouldn't be surprised um, yeah. you know, that, you know, in some way you influence their lives and you'll never meet them. You'll never see them. You'll, you'll never see exactly what you did, but but you help them in some way that, you, that you'll never know about. And I think it's important to recognize that. So on their behalf, thank you for what you've done and what you're continuing to do to reach out and touch people that you'll never meet and you'll never see. Wow. Wow. Thank you for that. That's uh, Wow. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff for an awesome guy. Thank you so much, Bradley. Thank you, Sam Page, as usual. What we gotta get you planned again. We haven't had you plan the show in a while. We gotta get you doing it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Be happy yeah. to. We gotta we gotta do that. So oh, we'll, wow. we'll we'll schedule that for a future podcast episode. But in the meantime, thank you all very much. Thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere, and we will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Woo. 